knowledge makes you free knowledge makes you strong with your heart right in the place you can't be going wrong when the going gets so hard you need to be on guard and all that you have is the Om Shanti. Hello, I'm Dr. Amarjit from Bangkok, Thailand, and welcome to Light of Knowledge International. And I hope what we do here is affecting you and you are learning and gaining and enjoying it as well. We are spiritual beings and spirituality isn't just a term, it is the very essence of who we are. And when we awaken to that, at least we are trying to be better human beings and help our earth in many ways. So the light of knowledge does lighten the earth as well as ourselves. Today we have uh, Dr. Valentina from Seychelles on this show for all of us to gain from. Welcome, sister. Thank you, sister. Thank you for this opportunity. Dr. Valentina, yes. you are, um, from the previous uh, session that we talked, I can see that being a pediatrician, you have uh, not only nurtured children and uh, felt they were your own, but you brought up some uh, key points of how you needed to let go and that you needed to trust. And, and Rajyo was able to free you from your anger and your uh, frustration daily mm -hmm. attachments mm -hmm. and um, made your life so much more easier and free and so at home you were more relaxed and at work you were more relaxed mm -hmm. so that was really beautiful to share with us um, what besides the knowledge and uh, the fact that it made your life easier did you have any magical moments or something that um, uh, you want to share with us that that any any experience that you had that was so powerful that you feel the world needs to know about it okay as you were thinking i just had a thought maybe i should share on food mm. and food i think as uh, for meditation i think it's very important to have uh, the proper food just mm. like we say food is good for the body mm. and uh, meditation is good for the soul mm. so f from the raja yoga way we have learned that we need to go vegetarian I will mm. go on that because you know in Seychelles we are, we are there's a lot of fish and meat and everything so I was that as well and one of the key things that made me change as well I and mean, maybe it's, it was not like an aha but it is an aha because it makes your concentration better mm. so for example I used to love um, already meat and all was out of question because uh, there's a lot of um, hormones and you know the the animals are being boosted to to be productive so that it can meet the demand of the world mm. then uh, already there was an issue here which i was already pulling out yeah scientifically but then what still was attached to was fish and eggs mm. but on eggs i'd like to share is that eggs used to be an issue because Long ago, if you remember, I don't know how it is in, in, in India or in Bangkok, but for us in Seychelles, like to have an egg because it was locally, it, like you'd have once a week. Mm. But today you can have a tree of egg one day. Mm. No? The way the mass production. Yeah. So I was just trying to share that to have this awareness, to make people aware that we need to also be have a choice of our food and drink. Mm. We have a choice because mm. we need to look after this body as yeah. well because this body has to be strong if it has to do 
a duty. If you have a purpose in life, it has, you have to have a strong body because a body that's weak, it's not going to help you anyway because if you're going to spend all your time in bed, then what are you going to do? So you need to look after this body. And one of the ways of looking after the body, I personally feel is the food and drink that we give it. So uh, stop eggs and then stop fish also. You know, fish is a, like a big thing in Seychelles. So the eggs that you mentioned, that the reason you mentioned that you saw many eggs on the basket per day is you're trying to say that these eggs are not natural. Not they natural. have been boosted yes. and they are produced um, through hormones. Yes. And to be conscious and awakened to that, yes. that what we are taking is not the way it was 50 eggs. years ago or eggs. 20 years ago, exactly. 30 exactly years ago. That. Yes. It is totally different now. Yes. And what was beneficial then Today, it's not. It's not exactly. Exactly that. Exactly. You got trash, just just it right. So this is what the awareness brings. You know, you can have so much egg, no problem. But what is the content you are taking? Mm. Yeah? So this is the issue. And then the other one is that when we, when we uh, choose vegetarianism, then we also have a choice of what type of vegetables and fruits we take in as well. Mm. Even that, now we know that if you're going to buy, for example, like in Seychelles, we have a lot of things that are imported. Almost all our foods and all are imported. And that also is a lot, in G I mean, there's a lot of GMOs and things like that. So I have a choice. GMOs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so my choice is that I take more local fruits and vegetables. You see, even if I have to drive out to some other place, I will go there and buy it so that I can, what I, I have a choice to what I ingest because mm -hmm. I need to look after this body. And why, why do you feel that having imported fruits and vegetables is not just share with us? Conducive? Yeah, but, but you see, if it's imported, just like because the population in the world has gone so high. Mm. So, for example, let's take an orange tree. I'm just taking in general. An orange tree takes about nine months to get oranges. Mm. So now they must be oxin. Oxin is the hormone. So they must be injecting that tree. And so we have oranges that are produced maybe in three months or in four months, but they have no seeds. Mm -hmm. And this means that it's not a pure orange. So the, the content of the vitamin C or the content of the nutrition in that fruit will never be the same as one that grew naturally. Now, not only um, animals and eggs, but we have to be conscious of our fruits and vegetables as well. Yes. And a lot of that that is being put on the table is not <laughs> as pure yes. and as beneficial as it was. Yes. And coming from a doctor who is um, a pediatrician who takes care of children, mm -hmm. you are giving advice on these things, which yes. is uh, very, very beneficial. Thank you for that. Yeah. And so, I just share one little thing because a little boy came in the, in the, to my practice and then the mother was complaining to me, says, but he doesn't want to eat any meat. He doesn't want to eat eggs anymore. And so I said, no problem. You don't force him. You don't need to force him anymore. So she sent me a little video afterwards. So you see how the children listen to you. He's a three-year-old. So she sends me a video later and then she shows it, she did, they did prepare the food for him and he didn't want to eat. Mm. So he told his mother, Dr. Seth says, you should not force me. <laughs> <laughs> I was so, so surprised. Three years, you know, he repeated that. I thought he was just playing in the corner, not listening Love to me. Listen. They listen. They listen. They yes. know. Yes. Actually, the children absorb much more yes. than what we think. Yes. So not only about food. If we are arguing or we are fighting over, and we think the children are playing, they, they are actually hearing everything. Mm -hmm. And they know. They know. They are very wise yes. <laughs> as souls, as energy. I, I had the same experience as a child, actually. Mm. I used to experience, I used to always know ex ex everything that's happening because I listen to my parents and all. But I always, they used to always like ignore you, you know, that you don't know anything. And I always used to say, but I understand everything and I know what's going on. But when I came to Raja Yoga, I came to understand that soul knows. It's just that it's in a small body that he cannot express himself but he understands everything. So I look at the souls, the children who come also in a different light now. How nice. Yes, You're yeah. very conscious that these are mature souls yes. in child bodies. Yes. How deep is that? Very, very deep because even the way we speak to them, we mm. should not ignore them and think they don't understand anything. They understand everything. And the same thing goes for disabled children. Maybe it's a, a time also to say, sometimes when a child is disabled or mentally disabled, we say many things. We don't listen. We don't know that that soul understands and 
they just not cannot communicate. They're not expressing, expressing themselves. Communicating, so, but they are absorbing. Yes, so we need to be careful how we, we, we interact with them as well. Very, Very conscious about yes. that. You were touching, so the uh, advice on the food was around that much, yes. that uh, to be conscious of food as well. Yes. And what about milk? There's a lot about vegan going on now. Yes. Is, milk is, is yes, milk is the same thing because if we look around. Forced production. Forced production, there you go. The conditions of the cows, the way they so, are stacked up and yes. not allowed to walk around. Yes. There are a lot of documentaries. I mean, you yes. see those documentaries, you feel like, what is the world coming yes. to? Yes, yes. All to meet the mass. It's us consumers who yes. are creating yes. this. Yes. Um, and this is what is uh, causing the climate change and yes. causing the so much uh, pollution in the environment and causing the deterioration of our earth. Yes. yes. So when we want to save the earth, we have to each begin with conscious eating, yes. conscious thinking yes. and total consciousness. Change. So and also helps us to meditate better when we have the right food. The so key. the other way around as well. The key. Consciousness makes you eat right, but yeah. eating right makes you Meditate. able to connect, connect with better. the higher being and be filled up quicker and better, yes. energized more as well. Yes. Oh, wow. Clarity. Both ways. Both ways, yes. <laughs> uh, Dr. Valencia, I, uh, you've been touching on beautiful uh, topics. Uh, Dr. Valentina, I was just wondering, you mentioned you had a son mm -hmm. and um, <laughs> Tell us, um, is it, uh, what are some of the challenges as a mother you face? Are you able to detach from your own child? And, uh, yeah. Where, was... <laughs> and about your parents, how about your parents? Yeah, uh, my parents, when I was already, uh, I'll start with the parents, but um, I decided to join Raja Yoga and both were still alive. Okay, because now they have they, they are deceased, which is about one and a half years. And I had a very good connection with them and both were for it actually, because they said they noticed that I changed because I was not maybe there as they expected me to be all the time there because I was more than in the center. Mm. But they noticed that I was, I had reached a higher level, which they never told me, but I just heard from when they discuss among themselves and they meet that I'm different and they feel that I'm helping them in one way or another. But of course, you know, as a family, you always want to, being the first daughter, I was always there for them and I was always there among them. But then when you, when you join the center and you're doing service and you're doing other work, spiritual work, it's never going to be the same, of course. So there, there was a little bit of tension, I would say, but in general, they accepted it and they came for all the programs and everything, which was very good. As for my son, at the beginning, he was all for it. But for me, I would say, I, would say, I love that I got the knowledge because I had a lot of attachment to him. Mm. A lot of attachment. How old is he? Now he's a father and has he's married and children. He has oh, I have grandchildren. grandchildren. Grand, yes, he has grandchildren. Oh, how old? So he's, uh, he was 192. Okay. And the uh, children, just now we have a grandson, he's six weeks old, and the daughter is uh, four years old. So, well, both are well, both parents are well, they are in private business, so they're doing very well. He's a civil engineer by profession. But what touched me, and as I say, I love Raja Yoga, because when he left, he had to go abroad to study. I never knew that I was so attached to him like that. So it's like my world was was Crushing. falling apart and uh, he left and it's like really like everything is gone but then I had the the knowledge that I took which gathered me and made me become what I am now <laughs> I would say so it's like I had a purpose of life because when he was leaving I was thinking maybe I should go and adopt a child so that I have somebody to stay with or I will look after some old people because this is something I had in mind from before, before Raja Yoga also because they say when we grow old, what can we do to the world to help the world? But there's nothing better than being a Raja Yogi. Oh. <laughs> because you are not giving physically but you are giving spiritually now. And that is the, the depth about it. Is because as energy beings, you energy. are able to transfer energy 
mm. without even um, physically being present. Exactly. But what about your grandchildren? Do you have attachment there? Yeah, I think indirectly because they keep on now sending you photos and you know you're checking and and the attachment is also to tell you the truth, doctor. You know, the son, uh, he was born and he looks exactly like his father when the father was born. <laughs> Identical. So it, it brought brings back all, back the all the memories, you know. Uh -huh. So, yeah, but yeah, but uh, what I know down deep is that they're just souls on their journey. So I need to bring in that balance, that all balance. Yeah. When you feel that you, you need their attention or their time and they are not free, you kind of... Um, connect and uh, give them their space actually the the beauty about it is they are they're staying in their own place mm. so when they actually come to me when, when they need me now you know to look after the child or they are busy doing something then i come in and they i will i will, I will always have time for them i've given them that space if i cannot then it's because of a program that i have to you know say no but and otherwise what about your practice as a practitioner i work morning to four Mm -hmm. And then afternoon, you know, so that time after four, I'm there for them or mm -hmm. I'll be in the center and we do programs. But then if sometimes he doesn't believe that I have a program, so he'll appear, you know, and then he say, oh, yeah, she's sitting with somebody. <laughs> <You know? laughs> so but otherwise, there's beautiful cooperation now with them. And I, I, ha I cannot complain, really. They, uh, they are doing and very you, you well. You never feel that you want them to come. You never feel that they do come. I spend sometimes two hours, three hours with them or I will go at all to their place and stay with them. Oh, yeah, we do spend time together or after work, I would go there so for a you, weekend. There's, there's open relationship. You can yes, see. yes, there is open relationship. And the little girl, especially, she looks out to being with me. So when I come, when I'm there with her, her name is Thea. So we bake biscuits together and she look forward to that. You know, I'll do some activity with her so that it's like productive and she looks forward to such things. Ah, yeah. so you're a wonderful grandmother. A detached one, but a wonderful one. <laughs> well, I need to. You need. We need to give this balance, which is something I realize. You know. You know. We need to look after the family, mm. and also show them what we're doing, so that they don't feel you're detached completely. And mm. uh, this balance I need to bring in, which I've realized over the years. Because before I thought you need to move out completely for you to be get your space and to be able to become what you are but no we need to become what you are the within lotus. yes within all that the lotus within the mark yes yeah so and you run a center or no i am i'm mostly you work from home i work from i don't work from home i'm working in the hospital i go to a hospital no, i mean your the raj yoga center is from your home no, it's the center itself, but I go there from you go morning to serve, yeah, there. To serve okay. there. So your so home is your own space? Yes. Oh, so it's, a, it's like only five minutes from the center. So like it's a Shakti Bhavan, in fact, because we have other three sisters also who are BK, which helps also because of the food of our ways, our principles. That's, That's really nice health. that you're able to find um, spiritual balance and work and, yes. and you're conscious of your relationships and you... Uh, want to make sure that the family also feels loved and wanted and cared for yeah. while you pursue your spiritual journey and serve the world as well. Mm. Thank you so much, Thank Sister you. Valentina, Thank for you. this calm and Dr. beautiful Amma. session. Thank you. <laughs> Om Shanti. Thank you, everyone, for joining on this session. And I'm sure we all hope we can be a bit like uh, Dr. Valentina here and so conscious about uh, what we eat, what we speak, how we react, and also trying to balance. And she's juggling spiritual self-spirituality, the serving the world, her family, and her patients. So everything is like, you know, and it, she's doing an amazing job. And earlier she even kept her parents happy. And, you know, as a, as a person, we have different roles to play in the world, even as an energy being. And we need to make sure that all those roles receive sustenance from us while we, and we can only do that if we keep a connection with the Supreme Being so that we can fill up and be able to juggle all the roles beautifully. So thank you. And let's take inspiration from Dr. Valentina and play our roles well as spiritual beings. Om Shanti. See you again in the next episode. Thank you.